Hello, my name is Lumiel, and welcome back to the Bloodborne Lore Through, where we play through Bloodborne and uncover the lore in real time and in chronological order and try to piece it together. In this episode, we're going to go into the, into the Cathedral Ward proper for the first time. We ventured into a tower in the last episode, which brought us back down through the Cathedral Ward, but we just kind of crossed through to get back to Erden Chapel. Before we go in, there are a couple things I want to go over. The first thing is an item that we got from the doll when we gave her the hair clip. She gave us this tear stone. It's a silver shining tear stone used to gain droplet blood gem. So, a doll sheds neither blood nor tears, and thus its nature remains unknown. Whoever thinks this is precious must be troubled by severe naivete. So, a doll doesn't shed blood or tears, and thus, it remains mysterious to us. And whoever thinks this is precious must be troubled by severe naivety. So, I, I think it's just alluding to the nature of this doll, who created it, why they created it, what purpose it served, and why the doll has memories or has feelings linked to forgotten memories. It's kind of hinting at an insidious nature of like, if you think this is precious, that she sheds not tears or blood, you're being naive, so. But it did also say that it can be used to gain a droplet blood gem. So let's do that. And now we have a tear blood gem. And the blood gem is a gem that you can socket into uh, your left-handed weapon. And this particular one gives us HP continues to recover plus two. So that is with each cycle or B or second, it recovers plus two. And that can be combined with items like this that recovers plus one. And you can cause a constant regeneration of health. If, if you need that. But you can also use the built-in rally system to regain your health. Which I highly recommend because in the times where you really need health. That slow regeneration is not really going to save you much. But it can help you from using blood vials as you're just traveling through a level. And you have time between uh, enemies. The second thing I want to do was purchase this hunter chief emblem which we see is a key to the gate to the grand cathedral's round plaza and you'll remember in the episode where we faced that first few very giant um creatures in the cathedral ward on the edge before we went through any gates we we did approach a main gate that said it requires a key so this is the key to that and i'll go ahead and read this before i buy it it's a cloth emblem that belonged to the captain of the church hunters long ago. Opens the main gate that leads to the round plaza of the great cathedral. The main gate is shut tight on nights of the hunt and could only be opened from the other side with this emblem. In other words, the captain's return. And this emblem determined the end of the hunt. So this is a thing that was used by the captain to indicate one who he was and that the hunt was over. And so on nights of the hunt, as we know, they blocked off the bridge leading out of Yarnum. They're also blocking off their gates, and this will allow that one to be opened. Functionally, it's just a key to the gate. So let's go to the Cathedral Ward. I will unlock that gate, but that won't be the primary way we go because really they expect you to go a different way first. First, we will kind of retrace our steps where, like I said, where we found that gate in the first place, which is at the foot of the giant guarding the, the gate. Let's deal with him. And then we have another one coming up behind us. No items. Oh, 
special items. And so, there we can hear him moving. He guards this gateway. Let's get under his feet. And I used the transforming weapon attack there, so while I was swinging, I hit L1, which does this attack. It's a very powerful attack. And he dropped blood vials, and up these steps are the gates I was referring to. Or the gate. That it said led to the main cathedral. So in theory what we're doing is waving this little uh, handkerchief that belonged to the captain of the church hunters and is indicating to those locked inside and guarding the place that the hunt is over. Which is not true, but we have his tool. So, there are the gates open, and if we really wanted to, we could go in through this way and see where that leads. But we have this door leading out of Erden Chapel that we have not gone through yet. We've gone out both of the side doors. Now let's go out the main door. So, we've been through that door and this one. This one led to the tower in the abandoned workshop. This one led to Old Yarnum. Let's continue through here. Just being quiet, listening for footsteps or movement or crows. And then this guy comes to ambush us. I used Rally to regain some health rather than backing off and trying to... Trying to, um... Parry him, essentially. And we see an item back there and this guy. So we encountered him in the Sumeru Labyrinth. Uh, we know how to fight them. But honestly, we kind of sequence break then. Um, not that the game didn't have it built in to allow it, but really the ti first time most people encounter this person, they're surprised. And so I'm over leveled also, but he would very quickly deal with you. And we're just going to go ahead and let him. Because what you should have done is rounded that corner and saw this item and went, oh my God, what is that thing near him? Hence the madman's knowledge is we're seeing something infernal we have not seen before. I'm just backing off to do this. Since I'm going to go ahead and let him kill me, let's get a good look at him. Now, it may seem odd that just because I think most people will die to him the first time they see him, that I also did, but you will see soon why. Because it will be the first time in the game where you die other than when you return to Hunter's Dream where you go, what is going on? There he is leaving. We had a sack over our head. Or we're in a sack more likely. And a last minute audible on this episode. I said we were going to do the Cathedral Ward. But we're actually going to do Yarhargul Unseen Village. So this person, I called him a snatcher when we saw him before because he had the bag. and But this is really why I called him that. So we wake up in this prison cell in a place called Yarhargul. Yar I'll just say Yarhargul Unseen Village. And the only way out is through this gate. And we don't know where we are or why we're there. We see shiny objects and a note over here though. So let's collect our cold blood. There are step steps heading down. 
Madmen toil surreptitiously in rituals to beckon the moon, uncover their secrets. So it is telling us that there are madmen who are working hard in in purpose to perform rituals that will beckon the moon, and we need to uncover their secrets. So we saw a reference to the moon just recently where we saw, I don't remember the item or the note, but it was referring to the pale moon. Oh, I got it. So let's go ahead and look at it. They're trying to beckon the moon. And here we can see the third umbilical cord precipitated the encounter with the pale moon, which beckoned the hunters and conceived the hunter's dream. So madmen are performing rituals to beckon the moon and according to the umbilical cord, the pale moon, I don't think that means literally the moon we see in the sky, but the pale moon led to the hunter's dream and the formation of the hunters really. So we have the steps behind us. We have more steps this way. So let's go behind us. And we see a, a corpse sitting in a chair with a form of cage on his head. There's the note, here's the steps. In the name of the healing church, cleanse us of this horrible dream. So she's praying. She's also in Yarhagul, Unseen Village, and dressed in church clothes. By your God, the healing church, you've got to save me. Oh, thank you, dear saint. I have no words to express my relief. You can take this at least. So she trusts me because I am wearing the tomb prospector's uh, clothing, which was what the the tomb prospectors branched out of the healing church and were those specifically that went into the underground labyrinths. It's sure to please an upstanding member of the church like you. It's interesting that she gave us Madman's oh, knowledge as so something that would please an upstanding member of the church. The Madman's knowledge, which gives us knowledge of the Great Ones and increases our insight. Thank you so much. I was seized on the street by a hulking brute in the cathedral ward and locked up here. There were yeah, many others got me that too. have been taken away. And I've heard moans echoing in the distance ever since. So, it's happened to many others, and she says they've all been taken away, and she's heard moans in the distance ever since. So the others who were captured Something's happened to them. So that was frenzied cold blood, which is just another level of this cold blood dew, thick cold blood, and a higher level frenzied cold blood. Now we will head the opposite direction through the prison we were in. And we have, to the right, steps heading up, to the left, steps heading up. And then we have a door going through, more steps heading up, and I think I hear a crawling chaos creature scurrying away. That ambush will get you the first time. 
I need to remember to let some of these happen so that uh, we can see the enemy and what they do. Oh shit. <laughs> Pardon my French. Here we go. This is what she does. So she's got a tool that she grabs us and carves at us with. And when we kill them, they disappear. I've got all the pebbles I can carry. He looks familiar at least. We've got a blood vial. This must have been pebbles dropped by her as well. By the other. I, I will call them a witch. They all seem like prisoners just sitting here waiting. So, I have doors I can go out. Or, let me... I don't like having items sitting around, so... I can hear big footsteps. And I heard this guy muttering to, to himself. I'm not going to do that forever. So we have steps behind us leading up and a door through here. So let's come through here. Looks familiar. So dark without the torch. And that's a horrific screaming sound they make. So, some more twin bloodstone shards, which are nice. This is the other door we could have come through out of those prisons. And an open gate leading through a door here, which we will return to. Not so much a door as broken through the wall. So let's go up this step and up these side steps and I can hear a familiar ringing tone of this so we've lit the lamp and we see another person in a chair with a cage on their head and above that this statue. Perhaps one of the great ones we've read about. The statuary certainly has changed from from what we've seen in Yarnum and Old Yarnum. And some more of the what I call snatchers. And those are the stairs we came up, by the way. Oh, you survived that. I wasn't counting on that. Oh, you... Punk. So he has nearly killed me. It just means be more careful.
more twin bloodstones, so those are nice to have. It'll allow me to upgrade my weapons even further. And that is a new rune. So that was moon. So moon rune, acquire more blood echoes. A secret symbol left by Carol, runesmith of Bergenworth. A transcription of moon as spoken by the great ones inhabiting the nightmare. Gain more blood echoes. The great ones that inhabit the nightmare are sympathetic in spirit and often answer when called upon. So we've heard the nightmare mentioned a few times on the Insight Bath and, and a few other places, but mostly we hear about the hunter's dream or the hunt or the night. But here it's saying that the great ones, this is a transcription of moon as spoken by the great ones that inhabit the nightmare and that these great ones that inhabit the nightmare are sympathetic in spirit and will answer when called upon. Functionally, it gives us more blood echoes when we kill enemies. So, there's another one of those that will grab you. Just watch out for the other side. Pebbles. They always drop pebbles, much like the crows. Okay. We hear a pig, like we saw in the aqueduct in Central Yarnum. Coming up these steps. Only this pig is a little different, a little warped and, and seemingly damaged. That reach. There we go. So again, we came out this door. There's obviously a main path leading this way. Let's see what's around this side. Twisted, it almost looks like a tree, but then it has hands in, in a kind of praying and we can see from this side it is a twisted statue and I'm guessing there there is a face under that cloaked hood of some sort. And dogs similar to what we've seen, but again, like the pig, a more twisted version of them. And he will try to pull us towards him. So, with large weapons, you do need to be careful of the walls around you. Bolt paper. That is a first we picked up that item. So, the bolt paper sounds similar to the fire paper. It's a coarse paper that applies bolt to weapons when rubbed. Invented. So, first of all, that is applying an electrical uh, charge to them. Invented by Archibald the infamous eccentric of the healing ch church workshop. First, we've heard the name Archibald, but it's telling us he's an inventor for the healing church and considered eccentric. He artificially recreates the blue sparks that are said to surround dark beasts. Again, we've heard of beasts. This is the first time we've heard of dark beasts that apparently have blue sparks around them. Unlike the other strange weapons created by Archibald, this one was favored by many hunters, in particular those who had even once laid eyes on a dark beast. So, favored by many hunters, especially those who had been in contact or seen a dark beast, whatever a dark beast is. We see an item, so watch out for any ambushes. Some more twin bloodstone shards. Frenzied cold blood. 
and a door that actually does open from this side. And that's because we've been in here before and we missed the door, so it wouldn't have opened anyways. But now, it does. And we can come out through that if we do need to revive at the lamp. We could run down the stairs and out the side there. Not especially quicker than just running through that hall. And now we have the option of the steps to the right or the steps here. Remember, we came out that door, so let's just run along this left wall and see what's down each little nook and cranny. So there's one of the crawling chaos creatures. I, I am really not doing much damage to him. So some more twin bloodstone shards. Those are in great supply here. And up these steps. Another door that surprise opens from the side. So that is a shortcut from the lamp and this is a more valuable shortcut. There's another view of that statue that looms over the lamp. The shortcut is more useful because if you revived at the lamp you could just make it right outside really quick without any enemies between you. And now we have these steps that lead up and around to the back. There's an item. More frenzied cold blood and then a dead end. So, an elevator, and it's not here, it doesn't operate from this end, so we'll have to find the other side of it and use it in order to have that be functional. And we hear another pig. We see lots of dogs. Um, if you really wanted to get into the thick of it, you could run and jump over there and just be right down in the dogs. Let's be more careful go down the steps that we first came up try to uh, deal with the pig first wherever he is there and he sees us and watch out for their charge all right so let's find out what was behind him. Another one of these statues. And back behind him is bolt paper that is created by Archibald and other weapons similar to that. And we're meant to simulate the blue bolts surrounding dark beasts. Watch out for ambushes around every corner too, um, like hidden dogs. They may not seem like they're doing a lot of damage, but remember I am highly, highly leveled since we're just doing a lore through and not like a challenge run or a speed run or anything. I wanted to be able to focus less so on the challenge and more so on the environment around me. But this can be a big jump and challenge for a lot of players, this area. There he is. All right. These statues are awesome. In the literal sense. And then, let's see if we can just get the dog's attention. Probably not. We did get his attention without getting the other dog's attention at least. And there we have his attention, which is all right. So they were facing this way, 
looking specifically at this, which is Etonatris, which is a right-handed weapon. We'll go ahead and actually equip it. But let's look at the description as well. So this is a unique weapon created by Archibald, the infamous eccentric of the Healing Church. Striking this peculiar Iron Morning Star flail like a match generates the same blue sparks that blanket a dark beast. Unfortunately, for reasons untold, the hunters of Archibald's time did not fu fully take to the device. So he seemed to be particularly interested in the sparks and the the bolts that were created by dark beasts and and I wonder if that is why he was considered eccentric and then you press L1 like you transform a lot of weapons and suddenly it is an electrically charged weapon so let's see what the if there is a conversion from when you're striking non-bolt to inserting a transformation. Yes, so that is the unique transformation attack. But we're going to stick to our trusty Ludwig's Holy Blade for now. So now the only path we haven't been in other than the door that broke through the wall uh, back that way is down these steps and behold a pale blood sky a pale blood sky now keep in mind our entire drive has been to seek pale blood and specifically right from the start we were told that's how you end this endless night this endless hunt so seek pale blood to end the hunt So we got specific Yargul gear here. This black hooded eye. Uh, let's go actually into the items so that they're grouped together. We got black hooded iron helm worn by hunters of the unseen village. So we're in Yargul, the unseen village. The hunters of Yargul answer to the villagers, villages founders, the school of Mensis. Again, this is the first time we've heard mention of the School of Mensis. Uh, the school part may recall Bergenworth, the college that found the holy medium in the underground labyrinth, but the School of Mensis was the village's founders, and the hunters for that group wore this gear. Hunters in name only, these kidnappers wear their black hoods low to shadow their eyes. So are the things I referred to as snatchers actually hunters for Yaragul village or by extension the school of Mensis? This helm is made of metal, a rarity for hunter garb, and has a high defense but only against physical attacks. So it's weak against probably fire, arcane, bolt. Thick black pullover worn by the hunters of this village. Um, again the same description designed primarily to defend against physical the binding of thick rope serves to both protect its wearer and restrain its foes so they would use the rope in combat to tie people up and same description designed primarily for physical so strong physical defense is what it's telling me and look at these the dogs facing the door and the kneeling bodies also facing the door. It's a very imposing door. We've got Madman's Knowledge. Madman's Knowledge. Madman's Knowledge. As if whatever is through this door particularly lends insight into the knowledge of the Great Ones. So we've been everywhere in Yaragul village except through this door and through the hole that was broken through another wall. And 
we can return to the hunter's dream if we wanted but we have things to finish up here as I just des described so this has been a, a full exploration of Yaragul um, let's just do a quick run through and then as you know I want to do the boss episodes and I would assume the giant door surrounded by bodies with madman's knowledge would lead to a boss I have a hunch I honestly can't completely remember but I am more sure of the door that leads through the hole in the wall so those are pebbles I'm, I'm looking specifically at the top of things now so for like example there and over to here I'm not seeing anything I've missed another thing that may be standing out as a feeling of incomplete is the elevator that we couldn't take because it doesn't operate from this side I believe that that would be something that we will gain access to later but behold a pale blood sky What does that mean? What is pale blood? Why is someone telling us that this particular sky is pale blood? Why are things so warped from their normal version of what we see in every other area to this Yaragul unseen village formed by the school of Mensis where people are captured and led here and or not led here, captured and taken here and taken away and in the distance screams and moans are heard per the the woman that we found in the basement underneath our cell said everyone else was gone and, and taken away so if we go back through the doors and through these doors this is where it leads to here and so, like I said, we will do um, the boss episodes in separate videos again. I could lead you through here, but I assure you it leads to a boss. So that is it for Yaragul Unseen Village. I know we set out to go into the Cathedral Ward. We will do that after the episodes for these bosses. And if there's any items that are unique to that, they will probably be discussed at the beginning of the episode following the bosses we will keep the the boss videos specific to taking on the challenge of those bosses so all right well i thank you for joining me and i'll see you in the next video